Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Lord, my heart is yours. I give it all to you. I give you all the glory. Yes, I love you. I worship and adore. I want to tell you more. Oh, Lord, how much I really do love you. And I love you.
I love you? Can you love God in your words? Your own words. Just love God in your own words. Love Him the way you know how. Love Him the way you know how.
clap for Jesus. Tell him he's your everything. to define what our inheritance is. Ask your neighbor, what is your inheritance? What is our inheritance? When we're talking about inheritance, what, what are we talking about? Praise the Lord. You know, many of us ascribe to the manifestation of the inheritance from God as our inheritance. It's like how people define blessing. Some people define blessing by what they see manifested tangibly. But blessing is not a tangible manifestation. The tangible manifestation of blessing is different from the blessing itself. Blessing is the source of that tangible manifestation. When you say I'm driving a car, the Lord has blessed me with a car. Okay? For example, the Lord has blessed me with a car. If people see you driving a very nice car, and he said, the Lord has blessed me with a car. There's a possibility of somebody driving a car the same, but without a blessing. Perhaps they killed somebody to get that car. Am I making sense? So you're driving a very nice car. You can mention the name. A Mercedes, for example, or a BMW. And while you're driving, it is because of the hand of the Lord that that Mercedes is with you. But then there's another person driving that Mercedes or BMW because he killed somebody for that car. So you cannot tell me that the manifestation of that car is the blessing. The blessing is the source of that car. That is why when the Bible speaks of we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus. Blessings are spiritual. Inheritance is spiritual. Somebody shout, Amen. Inheritance is spiritual. First Timothy chapter 2. Verses, let's begin verses 1 to make it sound good. He said, I exhort you therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving thanks be made for all men. That means you have to learn to pray for all men, whether your enemies or your friends. Are you hearing me? Even your enemies, you pray for them. You don't cast them. You pray for your enemies. So he says, I exhort you therefore for first of all that all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. And the next verse says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have, the Bible says, all men to be saved and to come unto the epignosis of truth. And to come unto the knowledge of truth. Praise the Lord Jesus. And to come unto the knowledge of truth. God would want all men to come unto the knowledge of truth. The knowledge of truth. Not just knowledge, but the knowledge of truth. God just doesn't want you to know. God wants you to come to the knowledge of truth. Now, the Greek word they use for knowledge is epignosis. It is the advanced, complete, and precise knowledge of God. Of things 
ethical and of things divine. You have a perfect, a detailed, a complete, a precise knowledge of God, both in the things ethical and in the things divine. We're talking about the reconciliation of balance, where I'm not only an anointed preacher healing the sick and casting out devils, but I understand the distinctions of Christian ethics and conduct, the character of God operating in me. The Bible speaks of how God reproduces his character in us. The Message Bible says you live a God-fashioned life as you learn to live from within and out, as his character every other day is operating out or in you or through you, from within out. Somebody say amen. So, we are not trying to look at a generation where people are so anointed, but without basic character. Do you know, some people are anointed, but they have bad manners. You understand what I'm saying? They have a very funny character. They are proud. They are pompous. They, are, they have overinflated egos. They, they are, you know, you understand? They, they behave like children. Yet you're healing the sick and casting out devils. Epignosis is to the effect that you are detailed, complete. In fact, the Greek word epignosis comes from the two words, epignosis. Epi means upon. Gnosis means knowledge. Upon knowledge. Upon knowledge. You know, you have something above generic knowledge. You have something above general knowledge. You have something above the usual knowledge. You speak, think, act, operate in a wisdom above normal people. There are things that people observe about your life and realize this is more than just common sense. It is above just people knowing the general things of life. You're above that. That's upon. There's something that comes upon your life and it's upon knowledge. It's above general knowledge. That's the complete, precise, and perfect knowledge of God in detail. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. There are prayers Paul prayed for the church continuously. Praise the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15, he says, Wherefore also, now I want you to hear this, ever since after I had all, listen, faith in the Lord Jesus and love and to all saints. Are you hearing that? Ever since I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love and to all saints, he says, I cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers. Praise the Lord Jesus. If you go in Colossians chapter 1 verses 4, he says, since we heard of your faith again in Jesus Christ and of the love which you have to all saints, we don't cease to pray for you. You see, every time they would hear faith and love operating in men, they introduce them to a deeper knowledge. Knowledge, epignosis, cannot fully function in a man who has not understood the precedental experiences of one walking in faith toward God and love toward man. There are certain things the Lord cannot reveal to you until you are perfected in the love of God. Because if things are revealed to you to a certain extent and access is given you, both doors of utterance, of articulation and demonstration of power, even to draw men to the knowledge of God, if a certain character is not in your spirit, you will destroy many by what the Lord releases on your spirit. You understand what I'm saying? It's like when he's telling the church in Corinthians. He says, I came to speak to you. I came to give you meat. But even as unto now, I am unable to give you meat for you are still babes. He says, I could not speak unto you as spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. And next verse says, he says, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it. You were not able to bear it, neither are you what? Now able. He says, up to this day, the church in Corinth was not able to take meat. They could only take milk. They could only be taught basic things. Why? The next third verse says, For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envies and strifes and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Do you think God is going to enter your envious spirit, your striving soul, and your indifference of carnality? And then he releases a certain revelation, and that revelation is going to save, but also bring many to destruction, because in you is envy. In you is strife. 
in you is bitterness. The more the Lord anoints you, the more you'll use that opportunity of the anointing and authority that is upon your life to destroy many. That is why the certain men, the Lord can never increase. I bet you, the more they increase, the more they will destroy. You understand what I'm saying? God would rather leave him with five members. Because if he gets 5,000 or 10,000, they're all in trouble. He's going to defile everyone. There's a character that the Lord expects you with before he opens certain doors for your life. It's called the chastisement of spirit. The disciplining of the Lord for you to receive. Do you know that there are people here, if they got 100 million, they can die? Just 100 million, you can kill them. They were approachable when they were still on bikes and bicycles. When they started driving cars, they looked the other side like this and started driving. You understand why? Because he's driving a Japanese car, Toyota, second hand, on 120,000 kilometers already. Before the guy was anointed, he used to sit on borders, he used to eat with people, and then the Lord anointed him. He's unapproachable. He's a woman, he's a man of God. She's the woman of God. You have to talk to her a certain way. You have to approach him a certain way. What threw him up there? Very simple. Glory. When the Lord added unto him, he changed. Some of you, many years ago, you were friendly. But when you started smelling nice colognes, you even changed. Your attitude changed. You don't hang out with certain people anymore. You can't talk to people who are not of your class. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You find a guy, he has only 200 members, but by the time you get to him, he's like God who dwells in a life which no man can approach. Tell your neighbor, never do those things. May the Lord prosper you, but stay you. May the Lord increase you, but stay you. May the Lord change you, but stay humble. Praise the Lord Jesus. Stay humble. Stay down to us. The Bible says he exalteth the humble. And he pulls down the proud. Some people are pulled down literally because of pride. They exalt themselves beyond measure. But why? There's little excitement. And some of us are excited of things that are actually in nothingness. The Bible calls them ever learning but never coming to the epignosis. They are ever learning but they are never coming to the knowledge of the truth. They are ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge. They are ever learning. They're in church, they're in school, they're in everything, they're attending. Some of them even read books. They, you, you find a person and you're like, but with what, with what I think you have learned, I don't think that you should be acting a certain way. Because some people think that learning equals to hypnosis. No, 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 no. Learning does not mean that you know. Learning means that you have only amassed a lot of information. Data in your head. Too much information does not necessarily mean that you know God. A mouthful of words does not necessarily mean that you understand God. Some people are mistaken to say, oh, what qualifies you to preach? Oh, I went in Bible school for 20 years and then I did this. No, 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 no. no. Bible school is not knowledge. No, 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 no. Bible school is an experience that opens your heart toward God. Some live with knowledge. Some live with only learning. You understand what I'm saying? Some live with what? Some live with learning. They are learned people from Bible school. But they are not knowledgeable. They don't carry epignosis. Yet, it's supposed to be a doorway. It's supposed to be a doorway. That is why we encourage people. When you embrace things like we've been doing school of ministry, carries Bible college, these places are open for you to go, not only to learn, but to know God. You understand what I'm saying? Because I tell people, eternity is worth investing in. It's worth investing in. It's worth investing in. Simply to know. Not just to learn, but to know. You understand what I'm saying? Not just to learn, but to know. Hallelujah. There's a difference between a student of the Bible and a discipleship of the word. A student is somebody who knows much about it. A disciple is somebody who allows it to work through them. That's discipleship. It works through you. As the word of God enters you, it doesn't just end there. It works effectually in you. 
Somebody say amen. So the Bible says they are ever learning. They're in, some attend Panero, some attend meetings elsewhere. They are, you know, but they are never coming to the epignosis of truth. So in every kind of prayer you realize there were constant prayers that Paul prayed for the church. In Ephesians he prays for them. In Colossians he prays for them. In Philippians 1 verses 3, the Bible says he, he says, I thank God upon every remembrance of you. That means every time he remembers them, he prays for them. Verse 4, always in every prayer of mine for you making requests with joy for your fellowship with the gospel. There were prayers that Paul made constantly for the church. And I tell people that if Paul has to be constantly praying for the church for some, it only means that that thing is so important that it cannot be dealt without. Praise the Lord. And I tell people, I learned this about 10 years ago. The Lord showed me that whatever was a constant prayer in the word should always be a constant prayer in your life. I learned that about 10 years ago. If there is an always... This is prayers that will never stop leaving my spirit. Although now, I pray them in a present truth. Because now I understand and I know how. I don't say I pray God that you give me a spirit of wisdom in the revelation of knowledge. No, no, no. I say I thank you because I carry a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge. I thank him. But those are constant prayers. And I would advise you. If you continue praying such prayers in your life, you're going to be amazed what the Lord is going to do in your life. Why? What was constant for the church then is, must be and should be constant and relevant for the church now. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now in Ephesians, he starts to pray for the church. He says, ever since I heard of the love of the saints and the faith. You see, when he senses a man who has faith in Christ and the love for all men, there is a prayer that is made for them. That means, if a man has not understood faith in Christ and the love for fellow men, these kinds of prayers are useless. That's why when people are born again, the primary things I always prefer, even when we receive people from salvation, the place when we're introducing them into, you know, the first orientation period when people receive Jesus Christ. When somebody has received Jesus Christ, there are two things they ought to learn. Faith and love. Faith and love. Faith in Christ and the love for all men. The revelation of the faith in Christ and the love of God. Those are foundational things. To release a man into the deeper places of God. Some people skip that and they expect to function in the anointing of the Holy Spirit but without walking in love. I have met men who have been in the gospel for 20 years, 30 years and they still do not understand that God is love. You're 20, 30 years in the gospel and you don't understand that a man or woman of God must walk in love. For God is love. Some people think it's depth to speak mystery. No. The depth of mystery is to the intent that love is revealed in our spirits. And faith in God. Of things ethical and of things divine. You realize the faith in Christ is of things divine. And the love for all men is of things ethical. Every time you apply the ethical things you love men. You're walking in the love of God. Every time you apply the things of faith in Christ, you are applying yourself to the things divine. Somebody say amen. So when Paul sees that the church is walking in faith and love, that's when the prayer is made. He says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Father of glory, may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the epignosis of him. I'm praying for an epignosis in your life. But I pray that you might Be given a spirit of wisdom and revelation in what epignosis is. What is epignosis? That's what I'm trying to give you tonight in the few minutes that I have here. I'm trying to explain to you the glory, the joy, the understanding, inheritance in epignosis. Because some of you must understand what your real inheritance is. This is Paul praying for the church. He says that having your eyes of your heart flooded with lights. Are you seeing? When wisdom and revelation in epignosis comes, he says the eyes of your heart are flooded with light so that you can know. Praise the Lord Jesus. So that you can know and understand the hope which he has called you. How rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints. He set apart. Which glorious inheritance? Knowledge. Epignosis. And the next verse And so that you might know and understand, listen, what is the immeasurable and 
unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in us for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. The Bible says in the next verse, which he exerted in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead and he seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. If epignosis is not by wisdom and revelation, you will never know the glorious riches of the inheritance of the saints. And what is the hope of your calling? You will never know how much unlimited, how surpassing greatness beyond measure of the power and the anointing that is working in you because you believe that same power that you used when you raised Christ from the dead. You cannot walk in unlimited grace when you don't understand epignosis. You cannot walk in immeasurable power if you have not understood epignosis. You cannot understand or you cannot walk in the demonstration of he calls it the greatness of power, of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, until you have understood epignosis in wisdom and revelation. You cannot know what is the hope of your calling. You cannot understand inheritance if you have not understood epignosis. That is why he wills that all men be saved, comma, next line, and come to the epignosis of truth. He wills that all men come to epignosis. And that's an inheritance for every saint and Christian. Every born again child of God must understand that knowledge of Paul. Somebody say amen. Some of you think that you're going to come out of financial issues because they spoke a word in your life only. That can give you a short fix. It can give you one miracle, two miracles, three miracles. But it will never deliberately liberate you. To the freedom of you accessing what a man has to speak in your life. What if that man doesn't speak in your life? I'm not saying that the place of prophecy is wrong or that if I speak in your life it's wrong. It's all good, wonderful. But every word spoken must be a confirmation of what is already affirmed by reason of epignosis. I'll preach that one day. We are supposed to be confirmers of affirmed truth. Not affirmers for you to confirm. Because your primary prophet is the word. He's the sure word of prophecy. Of which you do good to heed as a light that shines in darkness until the day dawn and the day star rise in your heart. That's the word of God. Some people think they are going, you can do anything in this world. Dodge it, do everything, but you'll still end there. The word. You can't run away. You understand what I'm saying? Some people say, ah, no, even now. Somebody will actually say, that apostle. I'm told he cast spells on people. When you go to Fanero, you can't go back. They don't understand. This is the spell. <laughs> Epignosis. Tell somebody in all thine getting, get epignosis. Praise the Lord Jesus. The ordination of the apostolic, and I need to make this clear, and I'm not boasting, it's the truth. And here you will know whether somebody says they're an apostle truly or they're not. The ordination of the apostolic has led us to the end of all things. And I'll explain that. I'll explain that. It's not in the things that appear excellent. It's in the things that have been examined and proved to be excellent. And I'm going to come back to that too. We are not supposed to walk with men in the life of God. We are supposed to come back for men. We are supposed to know the end and come back for them. We are not supposed to be walking with them. Because if we walk with them, some will go ahead of us. You understand what I'm saying? God has called the apostolic. It's like Paul. Paul was the architect of the foundation of the New Testament. He was the architect of the foundation of the New Testament. When a man like that says, like a master builder, I laid the foundation. Like a master builder, you can only build on Paul. That was a right given to him. It would be pride to lay near the foundation, save which Paul has laid, because it was ordained on Paul to lay foundation. Do you understand what I'm saying? If I refuse to quote Paul, I'm only building another foundation, which is not Jesus. He says, for no man, he says, according to the grace of God which is given me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. Are you hearing me? And he says, and another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Right? For other foundation can no man lay than this laid, which is Jesus. As in, Paul says, 
what was given to me, no man can lay another one. They can only build upon. And how they build, they have to take it, whether you build with gold, with stubble, with hay or grass, whatever you build with. But what was given Paul, you can only build upon. You can't. It would be too much pride and you'd only go into apostasy. Now, some of you, if you read the literal root word for apostasy, apostasio, right? It is literally for a man to walk off the designated state in the spirit. And the spirit of apostasy begins when certain men think that by wishful thinking, they can explore worlds beyond which angels even tread to go. Not because they are unexplorable, but because those places are not ordained for them to explore. They are not ordained for them to explore. They are not ordained for them to explore. Be careful when you seek for a distinctive mark in your life without honoring the ordained milestones that were set by the people who have gone before you in the spirit. It doesn't matter how much I preach. There are certain men in my being I can't deny. And there are some I can deny. But there are some I can't deny. But there are some I can deny. And I have my reasons. When you grow up, you'll tell the difference. There are some I can say, I, that one I have no... But there are some, even when I speak, I feel hugging. Can I see hugging speaking in there? I feel Till Osborne talking in there. I feel him. I might not quote his book or what, but I must own and respect that they understood present truth and they understood grace. I can feel it, W. Kenyon, in there. I can feel the Grandison's Finneys. They're in there. I can feel them. They're in there. Even the extension of light that shall come in my children. They'll also feel us when they're speaking. They'll have idiosyncratic actions that imitate us even as we imitated Jesus. Praise the Lord. Imitations are of spirit. When Paul says, imitate me, imitations are of spirit. And they are spirits you can't imitate. But they are spirits you can imitate. Now, what I'm preaching, I might not have read in a Kenneth Hagin book. No. In fact, for me when I'm speaking, I'm speaking from things God, God has started. That's why the things I share you might never find in books. Not, I'm not boasting, it's the truth. But the fact that I'm speaking these things, it does not take away the fact that there are people who have gone ahead of us. Who would understand these things as I speak them? And the fact that they would understand them gives me the right and responsibility to honor them because in a way they open these doors for us to know. You understand what I'm saying? I might speak things Paul has never spoken. But I honor the place of Paul in my life. Because without Paul, The things I'm speaking would not have a certain perfection. A certain completeness to them. Because he had to precede this. I open his scriptures and for me, they are connecting with what I'm feeling inside. Like some of you, you caught me in your sermons. (laughs) And that's okay. But you see, in this light you will see lights. That means you will even speak things or bring revelations that I've not even spoken about. Glory to God! Glory to God. That you might do and say things beyond what we have even spoken. And that's where the joy comes through. To say, God, the gospel is going far. Knowledge is being increased and the church knows more than it knew yesterday. Every time I preach, I feel like Paul giving Peter a high five and he's saying, Apostle. (laughs) Tell somebody in all that I'm getting. Epignosis. Am Am I making sense? You will never understand the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of power until you understand epignosis in revelation and in its wisdom. He goes to Colossians, where I was at before. Colossians chapter 1, verse 4. Verse 9, I think, it says, For this cause also, now I want you to follow with me, reading, respecting grammar. 
and punctuations. For this cause, we also, comma, since the day we had it, that love and faith eh, that we talked about for the saints, we do not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the epignosis of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Semicolon, not full stop. Meaning we are continuing, as at the point we've made before. That you might walk worthy of the Lord and to all pleasing, being fruitful, the Bible says, in every good work and increasing in the epignosis of God. Next verse. And say, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power and to all what? Patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father. You see, there is no full stop. It's continuing from it was. Or you go back for some of you to understand. Let's go back. For this cause also, comma, since the day we had it, comma, do not cease to pray for you, comma, and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, semicolon. In other words, we are putting a period there, but it's sort of a continuation of more of what comes before causes the following. He has not put a full stop. He's not separating the two ideas. He's connecting them by the semicolon. To say that even though we have made this point, the comma down says, but it's still a continuation of the point before. So whatever is coming after is as a result of what is before, right? And he says, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord and to all pleasing. Listen. And to all pleasing. Worthy of the Lord and to all pleasing, comma. Being fruitful in every good work, comma. And increasing in the knowledge of God, semicolon. In other words, now again, the point has been made. Increasing in the epignosis of God because you're filled with the epignosis of his will. There's a semicolon again, meaning that what's next again follows. It's the point before. Praise the Lord. And the next verse says, Strengthened with all might, comma, according to his glorious power, and to all patience and long suffering and joyfulness, semicolon. And the Bible says, Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Which inheritance? Epignosis. 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 Now, the one that there is full column, meaning that now what is following is as a result, again of what's before. And he continues to say in the next verse, who has delivered us from the power of darkness, you understand, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, full column, in whom we have redemption through his blood, comma, even the forgiveness of sins, full column, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, right, full column, for by him were all things created, comma, that in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, full column, all things were created by him and for him, full column, he has, he's saying, I'm still continuing because of what's coming. And he is before all things come up by him. All things consist full stop. Say my colon is telling you what is coming after is connected to what's before. Full colon is telling you what is coming after is because of what is before. You get that? You get that? So go read again and see the cause of something because of what is before and the connection of something because of what is before. You realize that our true inheritance is knowledge. That's what we inherited on earth. Knowledge. Now, if epignosis was your inheritance, how can you not know? How can you not invest time in, and, and money in knowledge? How can you not buy every book in the world and every city there is? How can you not read your Bible every morning if this is your inheritance and whatever has to be known? How can you not? That's what he says in, in Philippians again. In chapter 1 verses 3, he says, I thank God, uh, my God, upon every member of you, always in every prayer of mine, for all of you making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel. The first verse is I heard it. Verse 9, he says, and this I pray, Again, you see, this I pray, verse 9. He says, and this I pray, that your love may abound more, yet and more, in epignosis, and in all judgment, not no school. That your love may abound in epignosis, in all judgment, 
Because when that happens, semicolon, the next verse says that she may approve things that are excellent. Approving means that you, you examine, you search out and prove for yourself what excellence is according to God. Not according to what men call excellence. That ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Epignosis is our true inheritance. The upon knowledge is your true inheritance. Some of you think your inheritance are houses and lands. No, that's not inheritance. That's not inheritance. That's a manifestation upon because of the upon knowledge. That's the manifestation because of the upon knowledge on your life. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge, through the epignosis of God and our Lord and Savior Jesus. Next verse. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the epignosis, again, of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Again, there he used the epignosis, not gnosko, progressive knowledge. Sometimes the same words in the scriptures that are used as knowledge and not epignosis. Some of them are Edo. Some of them are Gnosko. But everywhere there is epignosis, you must understand and read carefully. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 13. You remember how he gave the fivefold ministry. He gave some to be apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, for the perfection of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, full colon, till we all come in the unity of the faith and the epignosis of the Son unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, full colon, that we might not be Children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slave of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Somebody say amen. amen. And he says, the fivefold ministry is to the intent that we might perfect saints for the work of ministry, the edification of the body, until they all come to the unity of the faith, comma, and the epignosis of the Son. And after the epignosis of the Son, he speaks of the perfect man. He speaks of perfection. And after that perfection, you are now at the measure of the fullness of Christ because of epignosis. How can you realize for a moment that your inheritance is in knowledge and you read the Bible like any other normal person. How can you pray like any other normal person? How can you serve like any other normal person? How can you listen to the word like any other normal person? When you know that it's in your inheritance. That is why some of, some of us, when we are reading the word, it's as if we are, oh, karibo zita laba. Some of you, when they say, you're meeting the president of Uganda. There's a way you enter. That's how I do it when I'm meeting the Bible. When I'm going to read the word, oh my goodness. I tell you this, even the Lord knows. That there are even times I would wash my hands because I'm going to touch sacred scripture. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh my goodness. That's the day I make my best cup of tea. Are you hearing me? Sit in my most comfortable posture. Open the scripture and say, Rakataba koyalando rosate. What are you saying today? And as we behold like in a mirror the glory of God, the Bible says we are metamorphosed. We are changed from one degree of glory into another degree of glory. And the Bible says, and all of that is from the Lord. How can you read the Bible? Some of you don't even have Bibles. No. I have Bibles on all my phones, everything. I have Bible in my office everywhere. Why? Because for me, the moment... Ay, 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 ay. I wish some of you understand what some of us are. You wake up in the morning and you realize, okay, you might spend 15 minutes there. You go with your Bible. <laughs> you open the scripture. 
You speak in tongues. Hallelujah. You go to your bathroom meditating. You come out of the bathroom meditating. Are you hearing me? You sit in the living room meditating. You sit in the car meditating. You walk around meditating. You do everything meditating. At the sound of the word, you're like, oh, Rabotai Alamandi. Because it's my inheritance. How can Fanero fail? I can't speak a word and it doesn't come to pass. It's impossible. I cannot speak a word in the day and come to pass. It's impossible. Why? Because I know what I believe. These words, the Bible says, they are spirit and they are life to them that find them. Find, child of God, find. Hallelujah. Get into the word and dig inside and say, hmm, what is Colossians saying? What does the face and say? Oh, okay. What does this mystery say? Then open the words, the hypnosis, study them and say, okay, this is what the hypnosis says. Okay, if I read this and then I read that, how do I connect with the hypnosis? Oh, okay. This is what you're saying, ah! You read it in Greek. You read it in Hebrew. You dissect it. You go and Why? Because it is our inheritance. Epignosis. Somebody say epignosis is my inheritance. You've been blessed with everything that pertains to life and godliness through epignosis. Through epignosis. Through epignosis. That's the guarantee of your inheritance. Wow. Get CDs. eh? Get your Bible. Are you hearing me? You know, you, you know, back in those days when I was growing up, they used to tell us, be a man. Be man enough. No. You understand? Be, you're not woman enough. No, no. We are not in a, in Christ there is neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free male or female. No. Now we are word enough. Are you hearing me? This man thinks they are proposing to you. Is he? First get. He takes you out. Order for a glass of water or juice. Order for your first meal and say, so, uh uh-huh, tell me, what is the hypnosis? Who is God? How do you understand the anointing? What is the Holy Ghost? How does He work in your life? Do you hear the voice of God? How do you hear the voice of God? Every time He's answering, you're putting tick, tick, tick. Then you say, ah, apostle, I found... Same applies to men. The day you get her, you start asking her stories of Ruth and Naomi. You start asking her stories of Ezekiel and Obadiah. You tell her Manasseh. Who is Manasseh? You don't know your friend Manasseh. No, I don't. Seek the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody walked to me and told me, Apostle, we want to hire people from your ministry. Ask them why. Ah, they know too much. I said. Interviews we shall just do for formality. But the person you say, we shall just hire. I said, why? Because they know too much. Somebody shout hallelujah. They know too much. They know too much. Leave the word alone. I shared in, I've not shared this in Fonero. I shared with people, I told them, we were in Botswana and they brought this guy. And he was really sick. You could see he was really sick. You know a very sick guy? And they told me he's dying of HIV. And we laid hands on the guy. I commanded it out. And the bishop sent me a message and told me, we've gone to hospital upon hospital upon hospital. They can't find HIV, so they can't. They can't. And I said, Nayemu Kama, if this thing can get virus out of body, I just direct it a little bit and it falls in. You see, that's how the anointing works. He said, how do people get healed of HIV? Epignosis. When I gave that word and I told that woman that you're going to have a child by the end of the year, what 26th to 30th, it had to be 
how can it be? How do you? They that know their God shall do mighty exploits. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I know God. Tell somebody, I know God. Manika tonda. Manika tonda. Waita wansi manyantari wansi. Waita musiri ingi sigenda wansi. Waita mudirisa sigenda muruji. No. When it goes through the window, I don't go to the door. I go through the window. When he uses the ceiling, I don't go down under. I go to the ceiling. Epignosis. Katalaba rekosa katalabae. Rika batele bosta. That you might be filled with all the epignosis of his will. All the epignosis of his will. That's why I say, when we are examining the things most excellent, we don't examine them as men learning. We examine them as men who know, who have exercised their senses, who have exercised and yielded their spirits to the completeness of the detailed knowledge of God, not the generic. I, I don't define perfection by general knowledge. I, I have to understand, I must be able to examine excellence. Many people have things they think look are excellent, but they are not excellence. They are not excellence. Because excellence is in, a, in, in epignosis. That's our inheritance. To know. And it says you have an action from on high. You have an action from on high. You have an action from on high, brethren. You have an action from on high. You know all things. Now the scholars come through. The theological debaters. Do we progress in epignosis? Or is it a full account of life already ready to work through us? And here is my. Because they can quote and say, until we all come, until we all are perfected in the epignosis. And this is my understanding. Epignosis is a fully given inheritance of every child of God. But when we are talking about the maturity in it, to come progressively in the knowledge of it, it's not as though to acquire it as we know it, but it is to get instruction in it as we have it. That is the essence of Gnosko. I am... <laughs> have I complicated it? But you understand what I'm saying? It's not in the acquiring it to know it as though by knowing more of it we get more of it. No. It's in the instruction of what we already have that every time we understand instruction in what we already have, it is manifested through us as us which know. Why? Because that's the mystery of faith. The mystery of faith is not the believing Christian to receive. It is as we have believed, therefore have we spoken. You will never walk in epignosis until you believe you have it. That's my point. Don't put it far for you as a place to attain. Put it in you as a place to walk in. That every instruction coming in your life is simply to walk where we, the Lord has ordained you to. Our dwelling place is knowledge. How can we die when we know epignosis? That is why I'm telling people the last prophecy and the knowledge, knowledge shall increase and the end shall come. That's the last prophecy. Let me tell you. You can't be beaten when you know. You just can't be beaten when you know. You can't be beaten when you know. We, sometimes, you know, like some of us, we can't sit down and tell you also some of our things we've gone through. Because some things are not important to narrate. If I pray for six lame men and two walk, the man of my, I don't even talk about it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not crazy. But some of us have been through things and you ask yourself, Mukama, if it's not for what we know, we would not have gone beyond this. I have realized that this grace multiplies in men who have believed to have it. When you're opening the Bible, don't open it like a victim seeking to know and understand. Open it like you're the master of it. 
open the Bible. You see, for me, every time I'm opening, I say, thank you, Lord. Because you have known and made known unto me all the mysteries there is in the world. I carry epignosis in my spirit. Everything I'm reading is just, it's just as, it's in the simplicity of who you are. And then everything you're reading will come through. This is the one thing the devil has stolen from the church. Knowledge. People don't want to invest in knowledge. People want shortcuts in the gospel. Kutula, kutula, mulokole, kutula, goba, 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 saba, 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 mulokole, saba, chikutule, 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 chicho, chicho, chicho. This is eternal life. That you might know the one true God and his only son, Jesus. When you go through a situation, open your Bible. When your husband tracks you, Musomere Nyiriri. When business is not better, when exams are refusing, open scripture, when money is not coming. Open scripture. There's somebody here. There's somebody here who can give witness. Of something that happened to me a while back. I just woke up with a funny swelling on my body. And the person brought me medicine. And I said, ah, first keep it. Keep it. I woke up every morning and I went in the mirror. And I started reading the thing, the word. Mama. He just said, oh, let me leave them at the apostle. Apostle preach. It disappeared. Do you understand what I'm saying? Learn to get a situation. I remember one time, many years ago when I used to fall sick. Many, many years. I remember one time. The last time I, I fell sick, I remember one day. Mommy knows I used to have malaria. Eh? You remember those days? One time I remember I got a New Living Translation Bible. And I locked myself up in the house. And I said, Naye, malaria, come and sit here. No. E chimala. Chimala. I... My mom is my witness. Every three weeks, I used to be in hospital. They used to call it chronic malaria. Every three weeks. They get me from hospital, malaria, malaria. I swallowed everything. Every, e- everything you know of malaria. It failed. I say God. And during that time, I was coming to epignosis. I will never forget that day I got my New Living Translation. Enough was enough. I locked myself up in the room. And I said, Malaria, sit down. Do you know that he was wounded for my transgressions, that he was bruised for my iniquity, but of my peace was upon him by his stripes? I was, Do you know that he that knew no sin became sin, that I been dead to sin, my liver to righteousness, by whose stripes I was healed? And as malaria is trying to recover from the blow, I come back, do you know that the Bible says that the inhabitants of that land, none shall say, I seek. Do you know? I started flipping scripture. I read malaria verses. Get into your car business. And close the door. And tell it now we need to talk. Sit down. Do you know. That for this reason he was made poor. That I could be rich. Do you know. That the steps of a righteous man. Are ordered of the Lord. I didn't enter this business by mistake. Do you. Mama, 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 mama. Fiasman is giving you headache. You don't need to call him. Call his spirit. Tell it to Peter. Listen to me, Peter. The Bible says, whatever the Lord joins, no man... It's called the word of God. It is sharp. 
quick and active. Oh, it is active. That's the word of God. It is quick. It is sharp. Sharper than a double-edged sword. Cuts of thunder, separates. Why do you think we speak a lot of scriptures? Because we've warred with them. When we were hungry, we were with these things. When Fanero was, oh, ya rabba kotele mayendo. You'd look at an empty chair and you open scripture after service. Are you hearing me? I remember those days when we had started even now. Praise the Lord. You're driving your car one day and the car is out of gas. You open the Bible. Tell it to your car. I am a servant of the Most High God. He says, no good thing shall we withhold from me. It is a small thing for me to believe you for fuel. Psych up. Tell somebody to fight in the world. Learn to walk in epignosis. The problem is some of you are not mad enough. Mubulamu. You wake up, the pain comes. You also give it pain. Are you hearing me? The kicks, father, you kick it deeper. It brings you, you bend it. Are you hearing me? Walk on and go walk on. Walk on and go walk on. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away. Tell somebody the word of God is true. Let me tell you. The word can't fail you. You might be delayed, but I have good news for you. Techinagwa, it is not yet over. Things might not yet be working, but it is not yet over. Things might not be working the way they are supposed to be. Yes, I know. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. For the just shall live by faith. But he that draweth back, I shall in no way. Have pleasure in him. Some of you, things just fall flight. And then you try two times. And then you try three times. And then you sit down. I wish some of you know how many years we've spoken for this thing. I started speaking Fanero when I was 19. And in my head I know I must conquer. Whether the devil, my goodness. So when I look at you, I realize I've not even yet started. But it is working. Some of us come from Kawempe. We don't come from Kololo. We don't come from Nakasero, Naguru. We knew the taxi park when we were eight. Six years old. We learned to cross roads. They didn't pick us back from home. And Do I have a witness? We were not raised on Nido and Serelak. No. But thanks be to God. Who always causes us to triumph. And maketh manifest the server of his epignosis. Gnosko by us in every place. For the Bible says, for he chose the foolish things of this world. That he might, oh, not many of you are noble. Not many of you are wise. Friends, if it wasn't for God, if it wasn't for God, some of you would not have even left the village where you were raised. You'd not have even spoken English. Ah, that is why when we praise God, they should leave us because they don't even know where God got us from. My Redeemer lifted me from a merry clay, and now He has established me on a rock. Now I know. We never had cars, but we had the what? We never had houses, but we had the what? We never had connections, but we had the what? Are you hearing me? We didn't know white men, but we had the what? And we've gone across the world. We are flying, we are live streaming because of the what? The lame are walking and the blind are seeing because of the what? Cancers are living and the deaf are hearing and the barren are giving birth. Because of the word now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above. 
We ask, oh dare to think, according to the working power that is at work within us, how is it ignited? In the beginning was... Nothing was made that is made was made without him. For all things were made by him. In him all things consist. And he is the head of all principalities and powers. Tell somebody fall in love with the word. How many of you got the word has worked in your life? Oh. Oh, raise your hands and just speak to God. Come on, speak to God. Ancient words, long preserved for our war in this world. A resound. God's on heart Oh let the ancient words Words of life Words of hope Give us strength Help us go In this world Where we roam Ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words, ever true, changing me. We have cursed with open hearts. Let the ancient. Holy words of our faith Hand it down to the same Came to us through sacrifice He the faithful words of Christ
generation. You'll produce fruit. Even in your old age, your children will serve God. Your children's children will serve God. The anointing on your life, it cannot be limited. It is unlimited. It surpasses greatness. It is way far and beyond. In the name of Jesus, the Lord has made you a wonder. The Lord has made you a wonder. The Lord has made you a wonder. I want you to raise your hands right now. I want to release something. I just feel led by the Holy Spirit to release something. And from today, that is if you believe. You know, when faith comes in contact with the Word of God, there's nothing that can happen. There's nothing that cannot happen. I want to speak an impartation in your spirit tonight that is going to cause an experience in your life to function in this grace that has been shared tonight. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Take it in the name of Jesus. There it is. 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 Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. I feel an anointing on somebody. I feel somebody. The Lord is telling me you're going to start demonstrating power like you've never imagined. The grace to demonstrate power comes upon you now in the name of Jesus. You're going to demonstrate power beyond many men can imagine. Some of you, the glory of God, it's going to be unquestionable. You're going to enter places and the moment you arrive, glory will arrive. The anointing will arrive. The sick will be healed at your presence. The blind will see and the deaf will hear. Cancers and tumors will disappear in your presence. You'll enter businesses that are failing and they will receive life. You'll enter household of marriages that are failing and they'll be reconciled. Whatever deal and contract you enter, it shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, give the Lord a man of God praise. Give the Lord a man of praise. More grace. More grace. More grace. Thank you, Lord. If you're here and you've never given your life to Christ and you want to receive Him as your Lord and Savior, come, come, come here. Come and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Thank God for something that you've believed Him for. If you've believed Him for a child, thank Him. If you've believed Him for a job, thank Him. If you've never given your life to Christ and you want to receive Jesus today, come here right now. Come, come and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Come and receive Jesus tonight. I want you to repeat this word after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe tonight that you are the Son of God, that you died for my sins and you were raised for my glorification. Tonight, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I am born again. Amen. 
The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.